Welcome everybody to the he Highway to Hell's Lid pay-per-view and we're starting the action off fast and furious. A fight has broken out for the Manly Manderville Championship. I'm your favorite announcer, Hugh Jackman, of course, along with my broadcast partner, that guy. That guy? That Who guy. you call him that? Wait a minute, that's not just that guy. Blaze all them all the greatest commentator ever exists in the world of professional wrestling and Lunar Blades wrestling and all sorts of wrestling. Even Naked Man wrestling? Sure, if that's what you're into, I'm sure you probably fantasize my voice into that as we speak right now. Hey, he's it's your own. I'm not, I'm, I don't judge. But this is, ever since Felix won the championship, it seems like Ed's been going after him. We got Alcor and Dr. Octopus. This is, I guess, a fatal four-way match with Dr. Octopus going for a pin. It really has to turn into pandemonium. By the time the ref got up there, though, to the ramp, I ref going back, I don't know how wise it would be to keep being that far away from the ref. Well, I heard the refs had pretty good eyes. They just can't count with the damn. Here, so You'll no we we definitely noticed that they can count to two and three quarters a lot and of course the ref exercising the current rules that we have being as he may see him down but he has to be within two inches to count I wasn't aware that that was one of our rules for this type of match, but... Why, well, yes it is. So Dr. Octopus and Elcor are really putting themselves at a disadvantage by staying not far away from the ring. Well, yes they are. Question is, why isn't the ref just standing in the middle instead of all the way on the one side? <clears throat> yeah. Well, you see, part of my oh. understanding is that we have very strong magnets underneath the uh, underneath the ring, and the refs wow. are, are, of course, required to wear steel-toed boots. So I guess whenever they hold still for a second outside the ring, it'll pull them back to the ring. I don't know whose idea that was, but that's definitely an odd one. Probably some type of issue with refs lollygagging and loafing around the building instead of doing their job. Ah, so that could draw. That could be an excellent point. Ed showing his unusual offense as usual. Ed and Felix going at it in the right hand, high, yeah, right hand side of the screen. Looks like Felix is using, utilizing a bear hug on Ed. And Doctor Octopus getting back into the ring. He just. Threw himself right into this match. He's a former Lunar Blades champion. Well, I guess that's what this belt is all about. <laughs> I can feel it says a little dirty today. As he's not shining as much as usual. No, apparently the caution designers have taken away the shine. Unfortunately, they uh, made the rest of it a little brighter than intended. Someday I'm sure our caution designers will get his outfit right. And Ed going for a count. Ed, who was, of course, absolutely devastated when he lost his... Um, shiny. In fact, that's about all he could be, uh, seen, seen to say. That seems to be all he could say. Wandering around the back room just going, shiny, 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 shiny. There what really was quite the uh, sight to behold. I hope that doesn't cause him to have another breakdown like last time. Well, you never know. 
Apparently, uh, Ed intentionally went over the rope there to give us a closer look. I don't trust a guy. Well, I think I think I trust both him and and uh, I guess Edward Sleepington, his alter ego that's capable of taking physical form. Hmm. Huh. Just doesn't sound trustworthy. But so far, this match is really broken down into Doctor Octopus versus Alcor, Felix versus Ed. We have seen Alcor and Felix work together before. And Alcor utilizing that speed over strength with Doctor Octopus. I wonder if it's true if Dr. Octopus has the ability and the means in which he's already learned eight techniques in order to be the man within eight minutes. Well, I certainly don't think it's going to happen tonight. I think we're getting to be about the eight minute mark on this match. And he's not faring too well. Only a two count though. Now this the only thing that really has me worried, though, is this onimus. I can never pronounce that word, uh, Blaze. Onimus? And well, it's ominous. You're trying to say you just did say it. Oh, well, goody for me. I meant to do that. This onimus structure that's been hanging above our ring. You could see the uh, bottom of it earlier with the uh, camera pulled out. Apparently, this devious device, this diabolical thing is what Drago has been working on I don't know what it what it is it's just hanging above the ring well most odd things hang above the ring to limit for one thing and that's some sort of fighting or special or special match so um yeah special matches in the Lunar Blades Wrestling Federation that's right. Damn, I do believe man. that we do have a new Manly Manderville champion. Elcor was able to lock in a modified Boston Crab, it looked like. Able to make uh, Felix submit. Boy, Elcor. Uh, oh, sorry, Blaze. I guess he should have stayed with his harder metal and not switched to the softer metal. But uh, as I was about to say, Blaze, that's like what, our fourth champion this season for Manly Manorville Championship? Yeah. They almost get a new champion every time they compete for that belt. It's like anybody will come out the wood to fight for that belt and win it, and I just don't understand it. You should try for it, Jack. You know what? Maybe I will. Yeah. Once I'm completely done my bunk training and I can, you know, not runny, not run all breath, just breathing. Huh. Yeah, I think maybe I will. That's a good idea, Blaze. Oh yeah, you should you should actually try him right now. I'm sure he's tired. Right in Dr. Octopus. Mm, not quite that confident just yet. That'd be a man. But he may not that confident. Don't get that confidence is used, Jack. Well yeah, you know, you gotta build up your confidence. You gotta get yourself psyched up, right? No, you should already be psyched up. Well, I'm super excited to be uh, calling all the matches tonight. Not excited about this cat that's apparently loose in the arena. Yeah, he must be looking for you. You must just some other pussy on the loose. And get your confidence up. Hey, you are what you eat, you dick. <laughs> well...
Yeah, that's how you <laughs> feel about things. <laughs> uh, nice response there, Jack. You know, I should get that green woman to come down here and sit on you. Well, <laughs> I I would uh, I would agree to that, but. I wouldn't mind having my broadcast partner here with me tonight instead of screaming out of the arena in terror. Well, I'm not going to be screaming out of the arena in terror. It's more like a war call, but you wouldn't know anything about war calls. Well, as you said before, you know, green people scare you. I say they freak me the hell out. <laughs> Well, when I reviewed the tapes, and, you know, you say that they scare you. Green was a damn giant green woman. It's not natural. <laughs> Russia has white lipstick. What's up with that? Really? I really couldn't tell you. It's definitely an interesting fashion choice, anyway. You, you're right about that. Here we go with another uh, another exciting match tonight. Akari with uh, Kaz and her corner. They seem to be uh, teaming up as of late. They do. And I swear she goes to the same stylus as our great illustrious leader, Mr. Dog Inkerper Chambers. Looking at that hairstyle. It certainly is an, another interesting fashion choice, I'll tell you that much. And they practically wear the same color schemes, too. And Biara and Snail have been teaming up as of late. Like Christmas. A whole lot of red and a whole lot of green. Hey, now, there can't be any uh, men mention of Choco Mist until Halloween is over. Hey. Hey, I don't make the rules. I know what I see. Seems like all the saints are definitely waking right now. <laughs> or whatever you call it. In that wooden place. <laughs> Certainly interesting looks for both Snail and BR, I'll tell you that much. Indeed. Akari sizing up the competition. I would say they look like a classic comic book villains or something. Oh yeah, what villains no, would those be? The ones from the fabled city of Gotham. Nope, not gonna do it this uh, this uh, this week. <laughs> well, I just it, know. See. Pardon? <laughs> I just know what I see in these guys, and they're definitely from that series. Well, to be fair, there's many people in the uh, Lunar Blades Wrestling Federation. Looks like they're taken right out of a comic book, so. <clears throat> I still wonder how um, this young lady fights in this skirt and these heels and especially climbing to the top rope like she was a while ago well you do have to imagine that it takes a lot of concentration and uh, just I guess talent damn it like, I mean, could you fight in high heels? I've never tried that. I'm sure you haven't. <laughs> Have you? Unfortunately, no. 
You see, there's no heel big enough to heart to hold my massive frame. Now that I believe. But you wait, you wait. So one of these days, I will finally achieve my uh, goal of being able to wear high heels without striking oil. Well, at least you would be rich. Maybe you should wear the skirt too. That way we strike oil and shoot straight up your ass. Uh, it's not. It's not a skirt. It's a battle kilt. I thought you'd know that. Well, this is definitely a skirt. I'm looking at. That ain't no battle kilt, sir. And Biara, who's just been. Devastating this match thus far. Akari able to get off a little bit of offense. Not very much, though. I'm just going to say, like I said last time, there's times when this green woman is seeing some things, and there's a lot of young men in this audience. Well, young boys becoming men in the audience tonight. Yep. Yeah. And a ref in his strategic counting poses because I'm well, watching where he's standing at. always leaning over at opportune times to count well the ref is supposed to be poised ready to strike his hand on that mat or in the case of the uh, last match the ramp <laughs> yeah, a little, a little, a little prick is poised all right Seems like he's ready to strike something. And Biara with a single leg crab, we just saw a modified Boston crab last match win the match. I guess our competitors went to Boston crab school over course of this last week or something well a few people have taken a crab class in Boston huh. I hope and these crabs don't spread throughout the whole show I'm not I'm not 100 sure there but I'm pretty sure that snail just pulled Biara's shoulder off the mat So and Akari, go for it again. And I think that she's getting a little frustrated. Breaking out some devastating kicks with those heels. I get... I'm not percent sure if those are... Regulation heels or... Not. They're not regulation heels. And speaking of kicking stuff, <laughs> that cat in the arena should get kicked out. I quite like him, Jack. You're doing a better job at keeping up with these matches and going play by plays than you are currently. Because he just called in his little cat language the name of that technique. Oh, you speak cat? I understand it just a little. Ah. I didn't know that you knew other languages. Well, of course I do. You know, as a great man of the Empire, you have to be able to talk and troll whoever land you take. And you got to be able to make fun of them as you pillage their villages. Let me guess. You can understand only the words, please, please, please don't kill me in 167 different languages. And don't hurt me no more. <laughs> And that's a three count, Akari, who kept on using that uh, German suplex, finally pulled off the victory with it. I guess if it doesn't work, keep trying, 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 and trying again. Okay, first you don't succeed, try, try again, I guess. And that's how you got so many restricted orders out here. <clears throat> 
isn't it right, Jack? Well, you see, back in the day, it used to be try, try, try again until you get the restraining order, then try one more time. <laughs> you see, the secret was to wait until they uh, actually pulled out the restraining order and said, not another step, I have this restraining order. Then you know you've definitely hit the limit. Well, between you and your restraining orders, I will say this. Oh, that's a magnificent bridge that that green woman was put under. You know. Several like German place. suplexes and other variations. I guess getting dropped on your head and shoulders and back like that was too much for Biara. Well, sometimes you have to be ready to use your knees and toes. So that's why you don't want to always be on your head and shoulders. Well, I don't know about always being on your knees, but boy, I'll tell you, that cat's annoying. Um... Well, actually, Jack, he said he wouldn't mind getting in there for a Manly Mandreville title at any time. But he couldn't pass the weight restriction. So, yeah. Maybe the Papado Championship. We'll wait and see how he feels about that. We certainly haven't seen any, uh, any, uh, Papados lately, any Lalas. Well, I'm hearing that, um, uh, Presidente Trump has taken care of those little guys. So they're not going to be able to hop on their little planes as quickly as they used to be, you know. <clears throat> Well, you never, you never know what will happen next season, you know? It might be a new day for them. Huh. I think their day may be over. Next up, we're going to get a little bit of tag team action as the two Yans team up for the first time. Huh. What did you just call them? Yans. Both the last names are Yan. The two, the two Yans. The two Yans. Like some type of, sounds like some type of dome and, um, insult to their heritage. No, absolutely no insult whatsoever. Their last name is Yan. Uh -huh. You know, just like if I was to go to a family reunion, you'd be like, look at all the humans. Mm, I wouldn't say that. Well, what would you say? Like if you went to a family reunion, if you had any left alive. Look at all the Garlemond. That makes no sense. That's singular. No, I'll say uh, I must be dead if I see you people here. Something along those lines. Or why am I here? Or where's the food? Or where's the poison? You know, where's the ambush? Where's the poison food? Maybe it's part of the ambush. Exactly. exactly. An interesting pairing. We haven't seen these two in action with each other yet. This Carrizo guy is a strange looking fella. He reminds me of somebody. Who would that be, Blaze? Ah, uh, let's see here. He reminds me of the old Empire wrestler slash uh, professional gigolo named um, Bluff Blagwell. That's his name, yeah. 
Bluff Bagswell, do you mean? Yes, that guy. Because, uh, yeah. of course, Bluff Bagswell got his name when he uh, used to be a shopping bag bagger. That's right, he would bag all your shopping groceries and he would tell you lies while doing it. Hence, Bluff Bagswell. Huh. And I just assume he was great with doing stuff with other types of bags. You know, two of them. Two leather sacks, if you will. But that's neither here nor there. But it's funny how all the Empire celebrities I reference, that's the one that you would actually get. Always a good possibility. Uh, are you a fan of his, Jack? Ah, uh, no, not really. He was always a loudmouth individual with a bad attitude backstage and pretty much no talent. So he's a lot like you. I'm not really loudmouth. Oh, yes, you are. And then I don't go into the backstage area because, well, some people frighten me. <laughs> yeah, what do you think? <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, what was that, Blaze? Why do you think that is? It's because you're loud now. If anything, I'm uh, highly charismatic. In the meantime, well, you're a loud most, you know, braggart. Yeah. Hmm. Call cops. We should know anything about that. We just went over this. You should grab a dictionary someday. You see, a dictionary is a book containing words, Blaze. Definitions of words. Now, I know you're going to have a little bit of trouble reading. So maybe you grab a dictionary. And I'll read to you. Actually, I wouldn't have a problem reading because it's been proven that 97% of all Empire men and women can easily read me while like 98% of all Aeors and Savages can't read what the shit. Did you try to read that out of a book? Because I think you messed it up. And bro going for the top rope maneuver, getting caught though, that was quite surprising. Man, that size should not be on the top rope. What a dumbass. Or should I say, what a dumbass. I'm not sure if he's a uh, part of the order of dumbass, or dumas. Huh. One in the same. <laughs> but Saju and Caruza are just... Taking it to the bros. So technically, shouldn't they be the bros then, since they're the ones with the same last name? Well, unfortunately, I don't know what their relation is. That was a huge choke slam from Caruza. Going for the pin, broken up by Bro. And for a second there, I thought the Bros were, uh. Wait, Azriel. With a fell cleave, it looks like. The action is just fast and furious in this non-title match. I don't know why it's non-title. Well, that's because nobody's ever heard of any Jan guys. Jan bags, if you will. So, uh, we've seen Cruz in maybe a couple of matches, and we've seen Saju in a few anyway. And now he actually got a title shot, though. 
You do have an excellent point. I was trying to get the feeling, though, they're earning their uh, title shot right here and right now. It might depend. I don't think they will. You gotta work really hard to beat that ass rail guy. From what I've seen, it's practically immortal. Well, Azrael has barely let go of that Delma Championship since it was first introduced. Exactly. <clears throat> and only a two count. That was surprisingly close. Still wondering what all that metal up there is. Part of my understanding is that five tons worth of metal and fence and hell. I don't know what I'm seeing up there. Huh. Are you sure you're not putting on a brothel show or something? And you're going to be dancing inside of it. I don't need to hear about your fantasies, Blaze. It's not my fantasies. Actually, a couple of the ladies in the back were mentioning it. And they were saying just how they would love to see you in there. Huh, really? Yeah. They said they would mm -hmm. like to see the shoe on the other foot because they see the way you look at them all the time. And the bros able to eke out a victory there. I think it was under control the whole time. I wouldn't go that far as both uh, Saju and Caruso demonstrated some impressive offense. But if you look at the finish, both of them were on the ground. Those guys just put on a clinic. There is a reason why these two are the Della Mud champions. Yeah, right there it is. And that's how they roll in the House of Dumas. Not to be confused with the House of Dumbass. <laughs> two completely different things. Not really. It's all about the accent. And we'll be back with part two of this huge pay-per-view still to come. Who's going to hold the women's championship? And what is this huge structure above us? Come on back for more. <laughs>